Hi guys, Serena here. Thanks for joining me today on my YouTube channel. Today I have somewhat of a review of the Painter's Color Diary. I saw this on Jerry's Artorama's site and I kept flipping by it because I didn't kind of know what it was, but it is actually a book that you can make yourself. It's blank and it's a kind of an interesting idea because we all have those pages or journals where we have pages set aside and we get a new watercolor set or paint set and we swatch everything which is what we should do because you want to get an idea of what the colors are going to be like but then we've got a mess of pages all over the place or we've got a journal that has a whole bunch of pages in the back of the front with swatches in them and then what do you do when the journal's full? This is my Etcher watercolor sketchbook and I've got a whole bunch of swatches in the back different paint sets and so forth. Now I do like doing this because I always tell everybody to swatch on the paper that you're going to be using to do your project because you'll get a better idea of how the colors will look and so forth. But here I am with a bunch of swatches in the back. And what am I going to do when I finish this? Because I've gotten some projects here and I'm about halfway or a little more than halfway done with the book and soon it's going to just wind up on the shelf and I'll have to go searching for these swatches. But this solves that problem. So let's open it up and take a look at what it actually consists of. Okay, so I've got a, I should have a kind of safer thing to use, but I'm using a pair of scissors here. <laughs> Does the same job. All right, let's open it up. Now, as a disclaimer, I do want to say that I did not pay for this. Of all the things I've reviewed, um, I've paid for everything else myself with my own money. This was gifted to me, so um, I just want to let you know that, but I am going to give you my unbiased opinion. Now, first off, it kind of is a little bit busy on the front. Um, there's a lot going on. It tells you that you can see the transparency of the paints. Uh, you can do graded wash. It'll show you the opacity because there's a line that's printed down the, I think it's printed down there, yeah it is. It's printed down the page so you can see if your paints are going to be uh, more opaque or more transparent. And you can do color mixes, you can do dry versus wet. Um, so this one is a watercolor. So this is for wet media. Uh, water-based media. They do have another version, I believe, for oils. So that's a different one, but this one is for watercolor. So that's why they're uh, touting the dry versus wet. So you can use watercolor pencils, um, near colors, any type of dry media that is water-based, and then wet it and see how that looks. Uh, you can even just use dry media. So if you want to use uh, pastels and just leave them that way, you can do that. So it's got a lot of information on the front telling you what the benefits of this are. I, I kind of wish it was the layout was a little bit different because it's a little too busy t for the eye. But it's the meat of the, the item that we're going to get into, not what the cover looks like. So the second thing I did notice is this is 100% cotton, which is right on. That's exactly what we want. We want to uh, swatch on good quality paper to give us an idea of the maximum um, value that our paints can give us, the maximum um, qualities that our paints can give us. Size is 9 by 12, uh, so I, I might have made that 100% cotton uh, designation a little bit bigger or more in the forefront like hey you're getting a quality product here it's not just you know pulp paper but it's 9 by 12 which is a nice size I mean I don't you don't want these too too big um, there are 10 removable sheets with a glassine interleaving uh, 
So it's got uh, glassine paper that you can put in, that they've got in between uh, to keep things from sticking together. Or, you know, if you don't quite have it dry, you have to close it. You can at least put that there and not ruin the other side. It is 140 pounds, cold press, so it's going to have a nice texture. So let's open it up and take a look. It's got this cover sheet on it. Okay, there's your glass scene. I can I can feel that right now, see? So it's got that protective covering on it. And what is nice about this is that the sheets are removable. So if you decide that you swatch something and then you want to kind of put it in the back because you don't use that palette very much, but you use another one more and you want to get it to get to it first, you can pull these things out these pages, they come out like that. So that is quite nifty. Oops, that one should come out. Let me try the bottom. Of course, I didn't open this before. There we go. So that's quite nifty. Look at that. It's got that perforated thing on there, but it's not, as long as you do it gently, you can move it around in the book. You can put it back in wherever you want. What I want to do is, if I have a palette that exceeds the number of spaces here, and this is going to give you, what, one, two, three, four, five times... So five times seven, this gives you 35 spaces. But some common pans, you know, half pans, will come in, uh, what is it, 42, 48? Uh, so you can get a lot more color than you have spaces. What you can do in that case is just flip it around. Flip it around, now you've got them both on the same side. And that's perfect. You can use, just use it upside down, it's no big deal. You just title your page there instead. And I like that they've given equal space on the top kind of and the bottom so that you can do that if you need to. But let me put this back in. That was the glassine cover, yes. Okay, let me put this back in, and let's take a look. I want to see how easy this is to pull out and put back in. It really isn't hard. It's a little time-consuming here. I'm just putting them back in quickly for the sake of the filming, but there we go. Okay, so let's try this on some actual paints, or with some actual paints. And I do want to see if you can see the texture on that. I hope you can catch that. It's kind of a nice texture there. It's kind of a, a really... Um, deep texture. So that's going to be nice for granulation. But let's take a look. I do have my uh, Prima Complexion set and I've used this a little bit. Now for the sake of um, painting on the spot or out and about, I found this to have way too many browns in it. So this was the original swatching I did on this. I don't know if that's... Uh, focusing. I hope it is. But a lot of browns on it, which is great. But I found it had a little too many, so I swatched out, or so I switched out a green or blue for one of the browns. So this is what my palette looks like now. So that's why you'll see a blue one in there. It's just that I, that's the way I prefer to use it. But let's take a look and see how this is going to swatch out on here. Now, these are moving around a little bit. I forgot what I have in the middle. I didn't swatch that out, did I? I have no idea what that is. I think it's a Payne's Gray. I think I bought a Jackson's Payne's Gray, but I'm not going to swatch that particular one out, but we'll swatch the other ones and take a look. Let me readjust my camera so that we can do that, and I'll get going. Okay, so this has seven spots across, and my palette has six across. So instead of going six and then seven, I'm just going to go six and then go down the next one for six. And I'm leaving that middle one out there, that Payne's Gray, or what I think is Payne's Gray. So let's start. I can fit three of them or four of them on to begin with. Let's go ahead. I'll take a paintbrush here. This is my uh, Jackson's Icon number two. And that should be, well, maybe I need the larger one. It's the four. This is a Studio Synthetic. I'll use this one. It's number four. And I will get going here. Let's get the paints wet a little bit. I do use a dropper, a uh, little dropper here, to get some of the paints wet. I just put a little drop on each, 
pan and I'll do that for all of them here if you'll bear with me a few moments uh, while I'm doing that I will tell you that uh, because I've had some difficulties with my camera my old camera and my can my computer uh, as you've known if you've watched my other videos I finally replaced both and I am now having a problem with space so I don't have a space to paint anymore I'm using basically my lap uh, I've been able to use this table just for the moment so I'm going to enjoy that and film right now but I don't have a lot of space to film or a lot of time to film and I don't have space or a place to draw or paint so that's why you may not be seeing regular videos from me uh, I hope you can bear with me I hope to resolve that this summer when the weather gets warmer and build some kind of a studio space where I can go out and go into my studio and paint and film some videos for you but in the meantime let's just start with the first one and I'll use the actual names here because I have it on the card um, okay this first one is gold so we'll see how that looks All right, that certainly looks like gold I see the shimmer there a little bit and I'm just going down the page here I'm going to add a little bit more water to this because I want it to go down the page and give me that gradation I like so that's that at the end okay so that's the gold here is the lemonade now these spaces are these spaces are obviously more than I'm used to I'm used to these little tiny things because what I usually do is I take the number of pans that I have in my set or tubes and I divide that amongst the size of the page that I'm working with to see how many you know, I can go across and down to fit them all on obviously if you have more paints than this page can take you're going to have to do something so you'll either have to flip the page over like I showed or uh, you're going to have to use two pages and just have one on this end and then have another one on the next page over and just have to flip back and forth but I like the idea of taking the pages out and just setting them up on the other side uh, so that you can see them all the way across now I do like this this is a very nice texture I should have a granulation uh, sample for you folks to see because that I haven't seen it either but I think that would give us both an idea of how this paper uh, will perform and give you an idea of how your granulation paints will perform but you can see even a little bit on this how it's going into the little crevices there and I'm going to move this over because I know I'm getting to the end and I only have two more on this row I'm liking the way it shows you those almost look the same but they're not this I like the way this shows you the uh, with the bar here right where I'm getting to right now I like the way it shows you the opacity of your paint because we don't always notice that when we're swatching like this we're not really paying attention to that but this really gives you an idea of um, the coverage you're going to get when you're using your paints okay now I'm getting to the seaside this was from my currents collection from the same company from Prima I should actually say what the other colors are too that's kind of unfair of me to kind of glance over those and not tell you what they were but I'm trying to do this in the interest interest of getting this done and trying to keep this within a reasonable time frame well that did not really go the way I wanted it to this is rather a staining color too so let me see if I can pull some of that down without getting a lot of cauliflower 
stuff in there. I don't think I'm going to be successful, but that's okay. It's giving me an idea of what it looks like, but this is a really nice idea. I like this idea. Okay, I'll back up a little bit. So this was lemonade. This one is peach cobbler. This is namaste. This one is coconut. That is seaside. And by the way, I'm liking my camera because it has a flip up screen and no longer am I painting over here and doing this and talking at the same time. And you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> can't see. Okay, so now we're on to the second row here. And this one is going to be caravan. I really do love the, uh, the paint selections on this. If you do any kind of um, pet portraits, you know, pet, pet uh, paintings or animal paintings, wildlife, or uh, certainly of complexion, that's what it is put together for, curated for. Um, all kinds of skin tones, great. It hits every everyone you may come into contact with. It's it's perfect for that. Uh, but also I like for animal um, portraits, if you do any of those. I know there are a number of people that, that do that, specialize in that. Or just like to draw wildlife, paint wildlife. There are a lot of browns in here that are just fantastic. And lately I've been kind of getting into browns. This one is redwood. Boy, true to its name, it does look like California Redwood, doesn't it? Beautiful colors. You know, I really didn't know how I felt about this uh, this painter's diary when I first saw it. And, and then when I first got it, it was kind of like, well, do I really need something like this? And, you know, now the more I think of it, this one is Unite, the more I think of it, the more I'm liking the idea of having something where I have all my paints in one place and I don't have to, I won't have to, go searching for them and trying to figure out, okay, where did I swatch this bunch of paints? Because, you know, you go through sketch pads and then you're finished with the sketch pads and you uh, have to go searching for the swatches that you did in them. I'm doing a horrible job with this one, but I, I know I can do a lot better, but I'm kind of moving fast just for the sake of making this video a little quicker. Okay, Tiki is the next one, T-I-K-I. -I. Make sure I'm still in frame. And I want to move that over a little bit so you can see. I'm kind of going sideways on this, so I'm being a little bit sloppy. I'm not, I'm not being so neat with my here you can see the texture of the paper very well that's nice isn't that nice look at that you can imagine if you were to use some kind of uh, particularly granulating paint you'd come up with some nice um, granulation on this paper this uh, they got it right on the spot by making this a 100% um, watercolor uh, 100% cotton paper. It feels so nice. This has really got a nice feel to it. Okay, let me get that, get some white. Of course, I'm using a very nice palette too. Um, you know, these are really, these are really good quality paints. I wasn't quite sure what to think of them when I first used them and reviewed them. If you want to look at my review on uh, some of these, I don't know if I did this one, but I'll I'll link it up above if I did. And this one was bare. And the last one I have from this set is black. Okay, well, we'll, we'll see what it gives us anyway. Uh, we can kind of guess what it's going to be. And this one, may, all the pressure's on me because I want to really go in the lines. I, I This one will look really sloppy if I go out of the lines. Oh, shame on me. I have such a uh, an OCD with the uh, having to be neat and perfect and not wanting to mess anything up. That kind of goes to my sketchbooks, too. If you know, I don't know if you have that problem where you have beautiful, nice sketchbook and you, you don't want to use that first page, especially. It's like, 
oh, but if I use it and I, what if I ruin it? What if I, what if I, what if I? And you can't think like that. You have to use it. It's there to use. But look at that. Even that's showing how it settles into those, uh, well, how the paint settles into those spaces in the texture of the paper. This is a really nice texture. Um, again, I like this idea. This is a great idea. What would I fix? What would I change on it? Not a whole lot. I might have it so that I printed on both sides of the page. Uh, one side is smoother than the other, so this is obviously meant to be used. The other side is not. Uh, you could always still use that for testing, for drawing something real quickly um, to, you know, see how the paint actually works when you're not swatching it, but actually blending it and doing other things with it. But I would probably like to see this printed on both sides so I could use both sides of it. But I really love that glassine insert. That's a nice idea for things like pastels where you don't want to get, you know, the mess all over both sides of the page. Um, look at how vibrant those colors look on this paper. And it's no different than on my, uh, I believe this is Fabriano paper. So the vibrancy has carried over. Uh, you're going to see the same vibrancy on this paper as you do on any other good quality paper. So again, this is the Painter's Color Diary. This one is watercolor. And this is available, I know, through uh, Jerry's Artorama. In fact, I think one of the, the creator of this has some connection to Jerry's. I remember watching a brief video on that. Uh, I think she is uh, the granddaughter of the founder of Jerry's. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I, she has some connection to it, so she's an artist herself, so she knows exactly what needs to be done for this type of um, product. And I really do like this. The more I'm using this, the more now I'm seeing I'm going to be uh, using this a lot more. The other thing I can think of that I would like if... Now this has 10 sheets... 10 removable sheets. I wonder if they could sell separate sheets, like sell a, sell a pack of five in case I get to, and there are some of us out there that are, you know, art supply collectors. We know who we are. We don't need to name names, but uh, some of us have more than 10 pallets, or we will use that many pages. And we'll need maybe a couple more. So that would be nice to see in five, maybe a five-pack. If they could sell a five-pack, I'm sure we could squeeze five more in here and still have it work. Um, that would be nice to see, too, if they sold them separately as kind of an addition. Or sell them um, so that you can finish your watercolor journal here. And then if you have some oil-based media use that for the oil and tuck the oil in the back. Another thing I'd love to see, I'd love to see if they could make one or two sheets in this or maybe in an assorted pack in black because some of us do have black uh, or, or metallic paints that would be great on black paper that we test on black paper. So I've got the Paul Rubens there, Iridescence. This I was just goofing around with. This is Uli Chroma Blends. I've reviewed both of these in my um, YouTube, YouTube sh uh, not shop, my YouTube channel. So you can look back on prior videos to see those reviews. But as far as adding extra sheets of paper, a black one might be a nice addition. I don't know that everybody would use it, so maybe in a specialized pack. Well, there's my review for today of the Painter's Color Diary. I hope you enjoyed the review and that this helps you a little bit to know a little bit more what this is about if you happen to see it around. Uh, again, I know they do have it in Jerry's, and uh, I'm not paid for this promotion. This is not a promotion. This is just my opinion of this item. Um, they do also sell it on Amazon. I did see it on Amazon. So either place, you'll probably be seeing it a lot more 
in maybe art stores soon. But really a nice idea and something that uh, artists that will have several different palettes may find very, very helpful, especially down the line when you want to refer back to it. You've got everything in one place. I really love that idea. The uh, maker of this got so many things right, uh, starting with that 100% cotton paper. I, I like that. It's really nice. So I hope you did enjoy this video. Keep in mind, as I said, I'm going to try to get you videos as much as I can, but I'm limited with painting and drawing and I I just can't do unboxings uh, on end. I just can't do it. I don't have space. I don't have the money. Uh, it's nice to try new things. I'm a bit of a art supply aholic myself. I love to try new things, but I just can't do it. Uh, so I will bring you videos when I can, as much as I can, uh, until my studio is up and running, which is going to be a number of months, so bear with me on that. I thank you for being loyal watchers of my channel. Thank you for all your supporting comments. Go ahead and leave me a comment down below if you have something to say about this. I'd love to hear it. If you've tried it and have some experience with it, what did you find worked or didn't work? Okay, so here's the bonus for all of you that have stayed to the end and been loyal and put up with all my ranting here. Let's see what this Payne's Gray looks like. And it is not Payne's Gray. I thought it was a Payne's Gray. Guess what this is? I, of course, don't have the name of it. It is a Roman Schmal. And it is a beautiful, look at that color. It is a beautiful color. It is a mineral color of some type. I forgot, but I will print it below here or print it here so that you will know what it is. And that's the color. Go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and I will see you next time.